And here we go for chapter 8, section 5. We're going to talk about some of the effects of human activities on freshwater ecosystems. And as promised, it will be short. This one's pretty straightforward. Now, human activities obviously threaten biodiversity. They can disrupt ecosystems. They can do economic services provided by these freshwater lakes, wetlands, etc. Once again, remember HIP. Remember HIPCO. If you can keep up with HIPCO, you will be good with dealing with anything having to do with the human effect. But let's look at some of the things specifically that humans are doing so you can apply it in. We talk about rivers, specifically kind of fast moving ones. Dams and canals have restricted the flow of rivers. We are estimating that 40% of the large river systems, or some 260 some odd large river systems in the world, and about 40% of them have been impacted by dams. Now, when you put the dam in, it controls the water. You don't get as much water going down. We divert water off for irrigation, etc., and it slows down the buildup of silt. Remember, a river is flowing and the dirt is flowing down the river and eventually makes it down to the delta of the river. Well, when you put dams in, well, the silt stops from this area and the silt has to build up here and get stopped again. And you seriously cut down on the amount of silt that makes its way down towards the ocean or at least the end of this river system. This flood control destroys aquatic habitats, and it alters wetlands. Once again, we don't have as much water making it down here, and it interferes with the habitats that used to be there. So controlling this water, we use it sometimes to even try and specifically drain out wetlands, causes an aspect. Cities and farms pollute water a lot because we are putting fertilizers, pesticides out in the cities. This makes its way into the water systems. And as mentioned before, with the dams, many wetlands have been drained for human purposes. Not just because of a dam built in, but a dam sometimes makes it easier to do, and we can cut off water that makes it into a wetland. But we've just drained them for human purposes. We've drained the areas, and we've built houses on it. The Cape Coral area of Florida was famous for that. It used to be a big wetlands. They drained it out, put canals in, and put houses all through it. We've turned it into shopping areas. We've turned wetlands into farms. We've drained them for just lots of human purposes as space. Now, river deltas, so this is where we're talking about the river at the very end where it flows out. The Nile is a classic, the delta of the Nile, the Mississippi River in America where it flows out into. River deltas, this end thing of the river, coastal wetlands, and mangrove forests. Well, these things are all in extreme danger from HIPCO, if you will, from human activities. These things in general, river deltas, wetlands, and the mangrove forest, we find these all at the edge of the land and the sea. They provide natural protection against flood and wave damage during storms. Well, the degraded ecosystems there allow greater damage, for instance, from Hurricane Katrina. We have built up dams and levees and dikes and trying to control all this, but you get a big storm come through an area and it can wreak havoc on these man-made structures and we can get an awful lot of damage. And once again, these dams that reduce the sediment downstream, what we get is the river deltas begin to subside. A word that you're going to see is subsidence. That's what we're referring to as the sinking of these areas. So as the river deltas are not getting the silt because of the dams up the river, they begin to subside. And we see subsidence in many of our river delta systems and they're sinking into the sea. So we're losing this land mass as it sinks into the sea. For instance, New Orleans is three meters below sea level. I'm two meters tall. 
So three meters, we're talking like 12 feet below sea level. And we probably have all seen at least pictures before of Katrina. I lived in New Orleans for about three years. I left prior to Katrina, but I remember looking at the pictures and just being in awe. But almost all of New Orleans is three meters below sea level. So we had all these levees and dikes built up to keep the waters out from rivers. But when a huge storm front comes through, the water levels rise, the levees broke, and New Orleans is completely flooded out because we've tried to go and build on a wetlands. Most of this area of New Orleans was actually wetlands, but it was economic, so we built in it anyway. The picture that you see here is showing most of this area of Louisiana. That whole stretch there of Louisiana is sinking into the sea, if you will. It's kind of right at that sea level and it's not getting the drainage of the silt as we've seen before and it is going down and we're losing this aspect because both things, oceans rising and the silt not moving down because it's being diverted in other ways. So real quick, let's just sort of tie these things together from the chapter. We talked about coral reefs in it, how they are systems that thrive on solar energy, a huge participant in the carbon cycling because even the coral reefs itself are really a sink of carbon. They use calcium carbonate when they're being built in Maine. They sustain so much of this biodiversity. Once again, they are the rainforests of the sea when we talk about biodiversity. And these water systems, especially the ocean, needs a lot more research. The components of the aquatic life zones that we looked at, whether it's the benthic zone at the bottom or the photic zones near the top, and how they're all interconnected, how the different species move in and out between them. And we really need to identify which systems are in the greatest danger of being disrupted so we know how to act. Like in the Chesapeake Bay, if we know of the problem and we come up with a plan, people get involved and we can make a big difference. That is it for chapter eight, looking at our aquatic ecosystems. Take care guys, and we'll see you next time.